Hey y'all, listen. When the devil try to stick his nose where it don't belong through people, places, and things, your response should always be, God said it, period, okay? So when they come to you asking you, what make you think you can live in a nice house like that? God said it, period. What make you think you can drive a fancy car like that? God said it, period. What make you think your kids ain't going to go to jail and going to be mighty on this earth? God said it, period. What make you think you're going to marry that handsome man that knows how to pray and fast? God said it, period. What make you think you can marry that classic woman that knows how to pray and got her stuff together? God said it, period. What make you think you're going to be healed from a disease that does not have a cure for it yet? God said it, period. What make you think you can raise the dead? God said it, period. What make you think you can heal the sick? God said it, period. Listen. It's not what we think, y'all. That's what the enemy don't understand. It's not about what we think. It's about what we know. We know that all things are possible through God, right? We know that all things work together for the good of them that love God and who are called to his purpose. Listen, here's the thing. Because we know these things, that means we have decided not to live by bread alone. We have decided to take God's report by what he is speaking. That's why God said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of his mouth. Which means whatever God has spoken, when you hold on to it, you can't help but succeed. You can't help but to come into what he has promised you. Why? Because God said the earth is the Lord and the fullness are of the world and they that dwell therein. Which means what? When you have inhabited yourself in God, which means you are meditating on him. That means you are now having access to what he has. It's called an inheritance. When you are following the will of God and therefore now your desires are his. Because you now have his mind. And what the enemy will want you to believe is that you can't afford it. You can't be it. You can't do it. And you can't have it. Why? Because it is his job to make you look at it in your own might, in your own power, and in your own strength. And God said, not so. He said, it's not by our might. It ain't about your job. It ain't about your husband's job. It ain't about your mama and your dad and what they got. God said, it's only by his spirit, which means what? You can be working at McDonald's, Sugar Boo. You can be working at Burger King, Pizza Hut, Walmart, Kmart. You can be working at the mall and God will place you in a Lamborghini. God will place you in a Bentley. In a Bentley. See, God got you. God got y'all in a space to where he can elevate you. But if you listen to the enemy of what he's telling you what you can afford, then you'll never get what God got for you. God said stop focusing on what the enemy is questioning you about and focus on what he has told about on what he has told you. Yes, they said no yesterday, but today is a new day. Yes, they said no the last season, but this is a new season. God said it. That settles it. God said it, period. God said, eat his word. Believe upon him and what he has spoken. It's not by our might, nor by our power, but only by his spirit. Which means God ain't never looking at your bank account. He knows it's low. But God ain't looking at that. Because God said all things are possible through him. Not through your bank account. Not through Wells Fargo. Not through Bank of America. Bank of America. Not through SunTrust. No, it's not through that. It's not through the lottery. Let me tell y'all something. It's not through the lottery. Because a lot of y'all say, oh, if I just win the lottery. I was once there. Tell me I'm going to win the lottery. And God already had me riding a Bentley. How stupid did I look? God was showing me the whole time, baby, you don't need the lottery. You just need me. I already got you in the house. I got you in the Bentley. I got you in the G-Wagon. I got you in the plane. God, I, God had to open my eyes. But if you are not inhabited in God, if you're not meditating upon his word, then you'll be searching for the provision everywhere except for God. 
And you always find yourself working hard instead of working smart. Working smart means you're allowing God to bring it to pass instead of you bringing it to pass yourself. Because ain't enough money on this world to give you what your heart's really desire. Because your true heart's desire is what God's best is for your life. And it can't nobody afford that. Only God know how to open those doors. Are you listening to me? I hope so. This word is for somebody out there. Because I'm telling you, I was there. I was there. I was there. And I had to learn how to say God said it, period. Because God said so. What do you mean I can't do it? I don't know what you're talking about. God told me I could, so I'm going to move forward in it. I'm going to move forward in it. I'm going to move forward in it. And when God sees that you're walking by faith and not by sight, God said, that's my daughter. <laughs> That's my son. They're trusting in me and watch how these doors open for them. That's what God is looking for. If you're going to step forward in his truth. That's why God said faith without works. Faith without works is dead. If you just standing still, ain't doing nothing, ain't moving forward upon what God told you. Then you ain't going to see no action. You're not going to see manifestation. If God tells you you're going to be a great author and you ain't never decided to write nothing down yet, you will never be it. Why? Because your actions in your faith is dead. You got to bring life to the faith. Faith without works. God's works, right? His word when you move according to what God has spoken, God knows that you're trusting in him. That you ain't listening to the sidebars of the enemy. Him over there rapping all up in your ear. Don't listen to his beat. Listen to what God is speaking. He's already spoken it in your DNA. That's why it's something inside of you saying, I know there's more to me than what I'm doing right now. Your DNA which is God's spirit in you, is speaking, speaking loud. Remember how Abel blood was speaking from the earth? How was that? How was Abel's blood crying out? Because God is in our DNA. He designed us. He created us, which means we can't help but to bring forth what he's put in us. But if we don't have his word in us, then how in the world can we work the faith? How in the world can we bring life to what he has already called life to? Hmm. God said that he has designed you to be, do, and have it. Now you got to step out in faith. Now let me tell y'all how this golden nugget came about. This morning I woke up and I heard playing in my head a song that I used to sing when I was in elementary school in the youth choir. And it was called, Whose Report Will You Believe? It went like this. Whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. I said, whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. Because his report says, I am filled. His report says, I am healed. His report says, I am free. His report says, victory. That's the note. I was playing around with it earlier, y'all. But the point is, God said it. It's his report. His report says we are filled, we are healed, we are free, we have victory. That's his report. So when the enemy comes to stick his nose where it don't belong through people, places, and things, your response should always be, God said it, period, okay? I love y'all, and most of all, Jesus know you and loves you too. Y'all be blessed.